Hi, Robert Anthony here for Audio Tuts Plus. It's been a long time coming, but Logic Pro 10 is finally here. And I can say firsthand, it was definitely worth the wait. In this screencast, I want to show you some of the changes that have been made to the interface. But before I do that, let me quickly show you what to expect when you purchase and first launch Logic Pro 10. So everybody's going to be downloading the same product from the Apple App Store. It's about a 650 megabyte download. This took less than five minutes on my US broadband connection. So it's a real slim initial install. When you launch Logic Pro 10 for the first time, you'll have a mandatory 2.2 gigabyte download to install the core sounds to use the program. This took around 10 to 15 minutes for me. Finally, once that's completed, you'll have the option to download the rest of the 33 plus gigabytes of sound content. You can install the sounds now, or you can close this window and get back to it by going to Logic Pro 10, download additional content. If you have a previous version of Logic Pro, you'll be given the option to either reset or bring over your keyboard shortcuts, a very nice consideration on Apple's part. So starting from the beginning, when you create a new project file, you'll see this new window, which if you've ever used GarageBand, should look pretty familiar. You have the option to create a new project from one of the many Apple templates provided, or if you have your own templates from a previous version of Logic Pro, you'll be happy to see that they've made their way over into Logic Pro 10. I'll create a new blank document by clicking on the empty project icon. And now we're looking at the slick new interface of Logic Pro 10. I'll click to make a new virtual instrument. And it's important to note that if you click cancel, the new project will actually close out. So you need to create an arrangement track of some sort when you first begin a new project. Starting at the top in the menu bar, you will notice some new menus. These are very intuitively named, grouping everything in logical menus for navigating, editing, and so on. Next, you'll notice the transport controls and display have been moved to the top. There's a new tools area that can be shown or hidden with this button here, or you can actually click right below the transport and drag up or down. A new library has been added right next to the inspector, and the main arrange area is still in the center. The bin, notes, loop library, and redesigned media and file browser are still on the right. The redesigned mixer, piano roll, score editor, and step editor are still at the bottom. Now, if you're worried that you may have just spent $200 on GarageBand Pro, rest assured that most, if not all, of the Pro features are still here inside of Logic. You still have the track header options, for example. You can still dig into the environment and custom route and edit to your heart's content. And if you miss the information overload from the previous transport display, you can easily bring it back. Apple has really shown some love to the pro audio community with this new release of this amazing digital audio workstation. It's apparent that Apple has worked real hard to prove us delightfully wrong about the notion that they may be focusing on the prosumer market. This is Robert Anthony for AudioTuts Plus, showing you the new interface of Logic Pro 10. Thanks for watching.